Hi there. So this is the base of the cup that we did on a live stream. In my time, it was last night. In upload time, it's probably been a couple weeks ago. So you may have seen this elsewhere by now. So we are going to put cow spots right here using the ink drop method. This was a cup I did a few weeks ago inspired by Sandy's Organized Chaos. This is a glittered cup with the inks dropped straight onto the glitter. And then this is the other inspiration for this cup. Instead of Gypsy Leopard, which is what this is kind of typically called with the Milky Way vibe. I'm, so instead of the leopard print, we're going to do cow print. Just for something different. I'm kind of getting ready for a show that may have passed by the time this video <laughs> uploads. So we'll see how that goes. We're going to use chocolate. This is from Hobby Lobby. You can use any color for your cow spots. Might be kind of fun to do something turquoise, but I really don't want to do that on this. So this is all from Franz Glitter and More. There's always a new customer coupon in my descriptions, unless I forget. So you, if you ever forget it, it's always in another video. Uh, this is Nightlife Chunky, Fine, Orchid Chunky, Fine, and White Wedding. It has like no color shift, sparkle. You may see a few things because um, it's kind of messy when you do these. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is open this up. And we are going to just drop these inks straight onto the glitter. And I don't want to accidentally neglect the bottom. So we're going to do a little bit here. Kind of let that creep over the edge there. <laughs> How about get on camera? That's helpful, right? I love how that just spreads so sporadic. Like there's no way you could predict how that's gonna fall. I have not sealed this with anything yet. However big you wanna make them, however small, however many you want on there, do what, do what floats your boat. Man, it's windy today. Y'all can probably hear that kind of rattle in my roof a little. I'm not going to go too crazy. Just kind of some bigger spots here and there, working our way up the little swirl. I don't want it to be uniform at all. I want it to be completely... <laughs> hey, it looks like a Africa continent. South America? <laughs> Probably edit that out. I'm really bad at geology. <laughs> I'm bad at that too. I'm really bad at geography. Oh, y'all don't judge me. Oh man, okay. I didn't have coffee, but I am awake and caffeinated. I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> kind of funny though. I'm going to put a tiny one here. I am in love with how this is turning out. A lot of cow print stuff gets done with teal and reds, which is really great because that just tends to go really nicely together. But I'm really loving this pink and purple here. The next steps will be um, like that Milky Way. What is that? <laughs> what is wrong with me, y'all? Oh man, I'm getting my nails done in just a little bit, and she's going to be like, what's on your hand? I'll definitely be sure and prepare her for it. <laughs> Luckily, she already knows that my hands are usually kind of covered in spray paint anyways when I see her. Okay, grief, okay. <laughs> if you want it to be darker, you can go back over these spots if you wanted. Or you could use a lighter color, whatever. So I'm going to let these inks dry really well. And then we will 
seal it really well. I use some matte, matte clear spray paint. And then we'll epoxy it. And then after that, we'll do those mica swirls. Yep, just like that. Love how this is going so far. I'm ready to put my first layer of epoxy on here. I have this sealed really nicely with plenty of clear coat spray paint. There are some spots. I got a little too close with my spray paint. And so they're a little blurry, but luckily they are right on the edge. So I'm just gonna bring my mica powders right there. We're gonna camouflage that. So, I haven't shown this epoxy any love in a long time. I tried it once, and then I'm pretty sure I used alcohol to try and pop the bubbles. That was not very smart of me. I don't think it likes that. So, I've got my 30 milliliters mixed up. Oh my goodness. I'm making a mess. Oi. I've got my 30 milliliters mixed up. I'm going to put most of that, if not all of it, on here. That first layer after glitter always takes up the most, it seems like. I'll put that first round just a little thicker than I should have. So we're gonna go all the way, coat the whole thing. I don't want it literally dripping off because it doesn't seem to do as good that way as far as um, too thick of a layer, especially on quick set, it seems like. So we're going to go over this whole thing, let it cure, see how we're doing. It might need a little sanding, but I might do one more layer before sanding because you definitely want a nice smooth layer before starting your mica swirls. Now for the fun but messy part. The mica. I have these four colors here. They're all pearly, brown, purple, pink, and white. I already have a thin layer of epoxy on my cup, and then I have about 25 milliliters still left of what I mixed up to do that and make these. You want at least a thin layer on here because it just gives something for the micas to kind of swirl into. If you don't and you put it on a dry cup, it looks like little wormies. It's weird looking. I did it not thinking one day and had to scrape it all off. So I am just going to put some in my other three little cups here. Helps if I'm on camera, right? So like I said, I have about 25 milliliters. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in each cup. I'm okay having more than I need. I'd just rather not run out because I can always like pour these in an earring mold or something like that. It's about roughly five milliliters each cup. It's not an exact measurement. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you plan on doing more than one color or more of one color than another or very little of another, Maybe factor that in when you're doing that. But now, some micas will come in little um, jars. I've got some that are in jars, but some of mine are in these little specimen jars, which is very handy because it has a little scooper in there. Kind of a pooper scooper if you think about it. So I'm going to do... A little less than one scoop. That's probably too much, but I want it pretty solid. And I'm going to leave a little bit left in here instead of going full force. I'm using my new turner. I am in love with this thing. It's very quiet. Okay, so about the same amount of mica here. It's a beautiful brown. This pink makes me think of something my great-grandma used to put on her cheeks. 
a rouge. Okay, so get in there what you want, whatever intensity you're going for, whatever colors you're going for. And now we're going to stir them up. You don't want to whip it where it's frothy, but you want it mixed. It's going to be so pretty with that. I'm not going to record all of the the little drizzles, swirls. It's just redundant. But I'll show you at least a couple of times in case you haven't ever done this before. If you've done this before, you know what to do. You can fast forward or whatnot. Or continue watching because, you know, sometimes it's a train wreck. And that makes me want some hot chocolate. I've got this new obsession with Bucky's Coffee and the Ghirardelli chocolate in it. It's like hot cocoa and coffee had a baby. It's more than like just a regular mocha coffee. It's more intense. One thing too to think about is maybe don't use fast set if you've got multiple colors to work with because you don't want this getting too thick too quick. You need the runniness of it to be able to put your stripes on. So we're gonna set these off to the side and I'm gonna put something underneath here to catch my mess. Just do a little piece of cardstock there. So since I already have white on my stick, I'll do this. So I'm not gonna put any on here on the actual cow print. Just like I mentioned earlier, a little over here just to kind of camouflage where I messed it up. But just get going on it. As much or as little as you want. And I will go through in a little while and kind of like spread it by touching the actual stir stick to the cup. Don't be afraid to do that. One thing I do have to remember is whenever you initially do this, sometimes that first blob that lands on the cup can make it look a little bit like a tadpole. If you know what I mean. So I just try and remember to let the first blob land in my cup. Like that. That was a good example of that. Just like that. Kind of with the swirl of your cup. I'm going to do this with all my colors. Like I said, you can do as much or as little as you want, but I like to just kind of come through after and it kind of blends them a little bit. So if you don't want that, maybe don't do it quite like this. But I like mine when my colors kind of overlap each other just a little bit. And then you just kind of come in and fill in any spots that you feel like need a little something extra. Go back over it with other colors if needed. Don't forget your bottom too. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't have anything. It just kind of helps it flow a little bit better. But just like that. I'm going to let this cure. This is not fast set, so I'm going to give it till probably morning. And then I'm going to come over it, or go back over it with fast set, and it'll be all done. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing. And thanks for watching. There we go. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to spray this with alcohol. I'm going to spritz it to pop these bubbles. I'll show you. I'm going to wait till it gets back around, though. And I'm going to put a little bit more pink right there. I feel like it's got too much purple. Okay, watch for... Yeah, you can see some of them pop. So just kind of a light spritz. And then they'll kind of smooth out the little craters that the bubbles make. There we go. 
All right. Thanks for watching, y'all.